Crypto fans, nerds, hodlers from around the world, what's going on? It's Brian Masterson, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with your newest IR4 podcast coming at you live from Nashville, Tennessee. So, Brian, a lot of SEC stuff going on recently, a lot yeah. of regulatory comments coming out. Uh, we had a really good discussion, just me and you, a few weeks back. Yeah. And since then, some more things have kind of transpired and trangre- uh, transgressed. Um, Bitcoin's really about the exact same price it was since that episode. It did have a crazy rally. Went from <clears> like 6000 to almost twelve. Yeah. So, 100% increase since our, that discussion. Now it's back at around 9 Nine, no. So... Let's talk a little bit about the SEC, um, their statements, because they released some very interesting statements regarding exchanges specifically. So what do you know on that subject? Last time we talked about cryptos, I think that the CTFC and SEC were both representing um, in front of the Senate or Congress. um, And um, that hearing was interesting in the sense that the CTFC commissioner, that's the commodities, um, was trying to claim and, and um, advocate for uh, Bitcoin being a, a commodity. Um, so let's. I think it would be, be beneficial if we, if I kind of asked you some questions sure. about the higher level. You know, uh, what is a commodity and what's a security, and you know, who's allowed to do it? Because mm-hmm. you're a pro time. Pro time. You're a real. <laughs> Pro time. You're a, you're a real life trader. <laughs> you know it. You know it. <laughs> but um, before I keep going down how that hearing went, what is a, let's define what a commodity is. Commodity has a lot of different definitions. I mean, it can depend on um, really what market, what country as well, which is the other the other challenge that they're working with. Right. right. Um, I mean, so in regards to specifically a commodity right now, they are uh, you have gold's a commodity. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have frozen orange juice mm-hmm. as a commodity, uh, pork bellies, which is bacon, right? You can have uh, agricultural crops like soybeans, wheat, so oil. Let, all those are commodities. Let's let's say, I don't know what the popular video game is these days um, out there with all the kids are playing, but let's say you are a huge video game player in this video game, and you okay. accumulate all these. Let's let's call it magic swords or something right you you have a shitload of these magic swords okay. or or whatever that little thing in that component in that game is and there's millions of other players across the world well let's say you want some of whatever i have in that video game that i've took a while to accumulate and gain can i sell that to you you can yeah absolutely right so am i going to take fake internet money or fiat money, how is that going to work? Well, I can go on eBay, I can go to PayPal and say, hey, I'm going to sell you all these things for this mm-hmm. video game. Okay, that's my property, right? So I, I, I obtained that from somewhere. I, get, I obtained it by putting in hours of time playing a game. Sure. Perhaps I paid for it in fiat, but now I'm selling back to you in fiat. Right. That's something that was created online, okay, and now I'm selling it. Just like... Um, just like orange juice or pork bellies, like those are naturally created yep. and then represented in a digital type of asset online. But it, what is being built online digitally, what's, what's naturally being birthed online mm-hmm. that can be represented digitally? For example, uh, crypto kitties. People are building fake internet. It's, they're not even fake. They're real. They're, they're they're cartoon kitty cats <laughs> on the Ethereum network, yeah. and people can sell them. And tra- it's just like Pokemon, and they're selling and trading and yeah. everything. And it's bogging down the whole Ethereum network. That was a couple months or weeks ago. Um, but so, so what is a commodity? It's something that I think people value as uh, it came from somewhere. It doesn't really represent stake in a company. Um, cause Bitcoin, there is no company. Mm-hmm. So how can you have, if I own Bitcoin, how can that be a security? I'm not getting paid dividends. I'm not, there's nothing that is representative of, of a company. It's not like, oh, I own 0.005% of Bitcoin, the company. There's no yeah. such thing as Bitcoin, the company. Right. So with Bitcoin being birthed the way it did, I think that that created a commodity. 
And I think, and the, and the CTFC in the hearing was claiming Bitcoin is a commodity. The IRS claims it's property. All right, you ha- I have the right to sell my property wherever I want, do it the way I want. Sure. Now, there's tax taxes involved, and I think that's totally legit. Yeah. Um, I believe in paying your taxes. I think that uh, if you're speculating and investing in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you should be taking some type of capital gains on that. Um, so I think that uh, commodities, uh, we're gonna see a lot of the a lot of the space moving into a commodity, if you will, mm. if they did it uh, a certain way. But then there's this whole element of securities, right? Right. All right, cool. So, so just so we're on the same page, I'm going to read the definition of a commodity because uh, we also thought it was kind of funny. And so according to the CTFC, yeah, which is the yeah. regula- the regula- regulatory. This uh, is a commodity futures trading commission. So definition of a commodity. Commodity is defined in the Commodity Exchange Act includes the agricultural commodities enumerated in Section 1A9 of the Commodity Exchange Act. 7 USC 189 and all the goods and articles except onions <laughs> as provided in public law a 1958 law that banned futures trading in onions and all services rights and interests in which contracts for future del- future delivery are presently or in the future dealt in now the second part is a physical commodity such as an agricultural product or a natural resource as opposed to a financial instrument such as a currency or interest rate. So what's interesting about that is, I mean, first of all, the obvious, what is an onion then? Right, what the hell is an onion? <laughs> is onion property? Is yeah, onion a vegetable? Crazy. Is onion a fruit? What about coconuts? Know. I'm sure you can dig into that Commodities Act of yeah, I could whatever, whatever it is. Search into it. Someone got burned on onions bad. Holy cow, I didn't know that onions were... <laughs> such, a, such a problem. Yeah. Because again, I mean, cotton, uh, you can trade cotton's a commodity. Um, there's, there's a lot of commodities, again, mostly agricultural. Uh, but this is an interesting conversation, though, because when we are reading over these SEC documents and they are saying this is, this is a commodity or this is a property... Um, or it's a currency. I mean, I would just, I would make the argument that Bitcoin was created to be more of a currency than a commodity. Well, this um, it's really interesting. There's a, there's there's so many camps you can really put your flag in, and one of those in particular is uh, you know this is a new asset class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole new market. We've which, talked about that before. Which I which I can arg- which I can understand that argument. Bitcoin, and we have you have to look at all these elements. Bitcoin was created by a autonomous individual or a group of individuals. We don't know who it was. The co- everything that went into it, there wasn't any money raised for it. There was no money that was put into it by the developer, the true core developers. Everything was was just organically given and built, and then slowly, you know, people started saying, "Oh, okay, like." I believe in this, you know, currency and I'm investing my energy to mine it and at home you can you could mine it back then, mm-hmm. right? So I'm I'm actually putting forth my money. So there's then there's different electrical costs across the world, right? So if I'm mining over here at a lower electricity cost over there, you know, I can mine more coins and then sell them and then you can start selling them and then you're creating mm-hmm. profits and then there's a market for it. It's all about that that market creation, yeah, right? Yeah. And then once we saw it, really, it's not. It's I, I still. It's nowhere near mass adoption. It's more of a trend. But when someone purchases two pizzas for however many ten thousand bitcoin or however many it was, someone really believed that ten thousand bitcoins were worth something. Something yeah. to buy two pizzas, right? Yeah. So, it's the the you know, the organic development of that is huge. Now Ethereum is. Is different. We know who the creator of that was, um, and who 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 might have helped that creator too. But mm-hmm. there was a face, Vitalik Buterin of Ethereum, of Ethereum, and I will never forget. And I've said it on this podcast before. I, I will never forget when I first got involved in Bitcoin. I came across Ethereum, and it was selling Ether. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what the hell is Ether, and why are they selling it? And I have to pay for it. And like, what? I don't get any of this. And I never got involved, but they technically sold ether mm-hmm. and raised proceeds that went to a foundation that would really execute on the uh, development of the coin and what it did. Now 
Ethereum provides tons of solutions, all a bunch of decentralized solutions all over the world. But technically, they sold some of their coins, right? So you code a blockchain, okay? When you code a blockchain, you can do, let's say, proof of work, which is the traditional model, and that's mining coins, right? Verified transaction with the miners, I get rewarded. Okay, I'm mining coins. That's how new coins get into existence. Through, it's like minting, right? Yeah. So Ethereum actually sold some of those coins that they pre-mined. So anything that's pre-mined, I mean, it gets very tricky. They sold some of those coins to raise funds that would allow for the creation of further development of that blockchain. So is that a security? And I think now, and before we keep going down this road, we should define what's a security. Let's ask our buddy over here. Nick. So this is the definition of a security, uh, and, it's, and it's a long one, so I'm not going to read the entire thing. But pretty much, it's a, a, actually a relatively vague slash very specific, because what it more or less boils down to is if you are exchanging something to raise money or to value some type of business, entity, corporation, you know, sole proprietor or not, if you're raising money for the expansion and the growth of that particular entity, then it is a security. <laughs> I mean, it's so vague and so on point. Okay, now now let's try to dissect the cryptocurrency space. Yeah. So if we're if we're really digging into the cryptocurrency market, and again, it's cryptocurrency. The the word alone that yeah. still is very uh, relevant in in the market is cryptocurrency. Mm-hmm. Um. And then there's digital assets, and then there's tokens and coins, and you know, and then there was a Bitcoin. So yeah. when you when Bitcoin came around, um, it took on like a currency type of feel, right? Because it yeah. had coin in it. Yeah. Ethereum didn't. So, you know, what was the real goal behind Ethereum? I think it was to bring dig, uh, decentralized blockchain solutions to the world. And I think they are, they have done and have uh, done, um, they have done that and are doing that to this day. Um, what Ethereum allowed for too is is all these different forks, right? So people to take the code, build their own blockchain, um, change up that blockchain if they want. Um, then there was the whole DAO hack, and that's really where this the SEC came in. So. The DAO hack, I don't know exactly what year it happened. It wasn't too long ago. A decentralized autonomous organization. It was mm-hmm. a group of people that said, all right, everyone pull their Ethereum. We're going to make the DAO. Yep. And the DAO is going to invest in these different Ethereum projects. Okay. And based on the profitability of these different projects, whoever owns a DAO token would be paid dividends. Well, as we all know, the DAO got hacked. And so that's why Ethereum had to come back in, in the uh, the transactions or in the blocks and either go, are we going to go this way or this way? And that's how we got Ethereum Classic and Ethereum, which really was the start of all. And then there was MasterCoin, which uh, I don't know too much about, but that was another real first uh, ICO. Um, and I think they even used the term ICO, initial coin offering. Mm-hmm. I remember uh, going to a uh, conference last year by Distributed, it was called Distributed Markets by TC, BTC Media, free shout out for you guys, uh, who their conference is in Chicago this coming uh, spring, and I think in April is going to be great. I went, I think, two years ago or last year, and uh, one of the great developers, Jeremy Gardner, who created uh, Augur, which is a... Um, um, uh, what do you call it when you bet on certain things? What's that intr- instrument called? Prop bet? No, prop bet, no. Options, no. 
I'm drawing a blank. Okay. It's called Augur, though. Okay. It's a, good, it's a cool blockchain. Um, he's, he's sitting there on this panel. He's like, why is everyone calling this an ICO? Why is everyone... This is, and this is before last May when ICO is just... Mm-hmm. Right? Why is everyone calling it an ICO? Initial coin offering, like, it takes on the shape of an IPO, initial public offering. So I think what, what has happened is... Uh, people found this way to bypass some of the rules and regulations, or so they thought they could bypass the rules and regulations, um, and raise money this way. Now, before we go get into that, the Dow hack. After the Dow hack, the SEC put out an investor report that said uh, these Dow tokens took on the shape of a security because it was paying dividends and they were raising money to invest and, and whatnot. So... The number one thing you really do have to look at here, too, is the Howey test. Yep, and, which we brought up numerous times. Right, and um, that's common enterprise. So if, if, if you give me money and I'm taking – if there's an investment and your investment is for the sole purpose of uh, seeking profit, yeah. if you just, hey, yeah, I believe in what you're doing. Now I can't wait to get my money back. Okay, great. You're going to invest. So there's an investment for profit. There's common enterprise, which means I'm mu- mu- or using that investment um, – to build something or to provide a profit back to your return. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where the common enterprise is. If you're giving me money and I'm going out and building something and there's no expectation for profit, you'd, I think you're still in the weeds there from a security standpoint. And uh, dividend payouts, which come and comes back to the, sure. you have an ownership in this, or it's sure. a representation of ownership. So... After the Dow report came out from the SEC, people realized you could raise fun- by building a blockchain or forking a blockchain and raising funds, but through the sale of digital assets yep. or coins, we move into the uh, ICO realm. People in the U.S. were scared, um, worried about regulation. We have the tightest and I think best regulations. The SEC, mind, mind you, and the CTFC have, have not stifled innovation by any means, Okay. They've done a great job. And what's the point of the SEC? The point of the SEC is to protect investors and educate investors, which they have done a great job of doing. Um, So then there's people in Switzerland and Gibraltar and Singapore, and people are domiciling these different blockchains, which is like, I live in Tennessee. I can start a company in Arizona or Delaware or Wyoming or whatever. That doesn't mean I have to live there, right? Sure. So... People figured this out from an international standpoint. People who are in America building blockchains who want to do an ICO and raise capital say that they own a co- company, which may just be a P.O. box or their law firm in fucking Singapore. I mean, come on. The company's not over there. Yeah. You're not accepting whatever the Singapore currency is. Maybe you are. But now you're going to offer all these digitalized tokens or coins when all you have is a four to 18 page document that's called a white paper. Mm-hmm. Okay, what does your white paper say? It says we're gonna use the coins to pay salaries and pay technicians and do this and do that. Yeah, so that they can build it. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> yeah. So you're not producing any revenue right now. Oh no, we're, we're a startup. We don't have anything. We're just trying to raise some capital. Uh, okay, are you registered to sell these coins as securities, which is registering as a security with yep. C- SEC? Yep. And then selling them? Uh, no, we don't need to do that. Because people are arguing that these coins that they are selling to people will provide them with a certain access in that network. Right. So just like I said with the magic sword, right? So so when I, I go into an ICO, I buy 100 of these tokens, and these people are building one of the best video games in the world. What they're saying is that I can use that coin, those 100 coins to go purchase, you know, I can go get, uh, you know, whatever, an enhancement, a bigger gun or whatever it is in that game, I can use those tokens. But here's what everyone's failing to realize. Ever, all these people, and what's the, what's the major, what do people want to do with, with the blockchain world? They see this innovative technology and everyone shift their focus into, let's make money. Yeah. So they use a blockchain, they do ICOs, now it's, all right, now I got to go make money. They're not in it for the, the, for the long haul, or they're not really in it for the longevity of the project. I just got into this ICO. Okay, great, now I have to go find where it's trading. And the speculative aspect is 
I think really hurt the cryptocurrency market. Um, all these different exchanges really hurt the cryptocurrency market because people were getting burned. So the SEC announced a couple months ago um, there's these things called ICOs and um, be careful. Okay, They stated they were going after fraudsters and scammers. I think that's Did they say those words awesome. exactly? No. <laughs> not exactly, but fraudulent behavior, whatever. But the people who are scammers. The people who are who are conducting fraudulent behavior and trying to make money and, and scam people out of their money, right. they're gonna come after those people. Which yeah. I'm total agreeing sure, with. Sure, of course. You know, and I'm not I'm not saying I'm an accredited investor by any means or I'm a sophisticated investor, but I know better than to give someone my Bitcoin or fiat currency that lives in India who I don't know and never met, who I read a white paper. Sure, it looks good, but they're not really promising anything. But guess what? There's all these people saying, this is the biggest thing. This is the biggest coin. This is the biggest coin. And yeah, there's a huge pump and then there's dumps. People have to understand the amount of people who got into this uh, industry, this is still very early, so there's mm-hmm. still a lot of huge holders, and there's a lot of whales who can really move. Market manipulation happens every day. Pump and dumps happen every day. Um, so you, when you're when you're this guy who has or woman who have a couple hundred thousand bucks, let's say, let's say you have twenty five grand in your life savings, and you're forty some years old, and your kids are in college, and okay, I'm gonna take this risk. I'm gonna invest fifteen grand in this ICO. It's it's gonna make millions. False promises, other. Another thing, all these ICOs are saying you're going to tenfold your money. You're, why are you promising people a return? Yeah. All you're trying to do is raise funds. Yeah. And these people invest, you know, I feel so bad for them, 10, 15, 20 grand, and they lose it all because they don't know how to trade it. Um, they're giving their money to someone that they don't know. They're, it's, it's fallacy. They they're, have false beliefs. And it's a shame because everyone moved over from the focus of blockchain technology into how to make a quick buck. Right. And I think we saw the the, the peak of that from uh, December. Yep. Right. Yep. Late December. And we did that, and that's when we did our last an, uh, analysis of it mm-hmm. uh, with the whole bubble. Yep. The bubble graph. Yep. I think I think that that was it. I think December was the highest peak that we have saw in cryptocurrency. I don't think it will ever move as quickly as it did then. Do I think we get above the market caps we're at now? Absolutely, but it's going to take seven years or five years. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a nice, long, organic growth, yeah. slow and steady, not yeah. something that's hyperbolic curves, right? Right, right. Which is awesome. But all this fraudulent behavior, if, if you got in and you got burned, I'm sorry, okay? Um, and if you got in and you manipulated the market, shame on you and the SEC and the CTFC – should be serving you a subpoena or some type of some type of um, in, investigation, um, you know. I mean, my question is: Do you think people are really going to go to jail over that? Oh, because of what? I mean, that's it's hard because a lot of it's international. I mean, you can't do much if there, if there's someone is international. The SEC can only go so far. Right. Yeah. There is. There is a. Uh, the reach of the SEC won't won't go international, obviously, unless it was unless there's some type of U.S. Um, I mean, I, play in there, but I mean, I'll put it to you this way: Jordan Belfort, the Wolf on Wall Street, the movie and the book and everything. Everyone knows the story. I mean, right. he committed SEC fraud in the U.S. for over a decade. Right, and, and that was that was straight up pump and dump, right? I mean, hundreds of millions of dollars straight. And well, it was it was. It wasn't just pump and dump. No, he it was, was selling secure unauthorized securities or securities in a fraudulent behavior. Well, he was, yeah, it was promising a fraud- huge returns, mm-hmm. not giving huge returns. Okay. Yes and no, but I mean, also, I mean, what he was doing is what's called rat holes. So he would uh, create an account in his buddy's name and give his buddies a bunch of shares and then go and, like you said, cr- you know, create a demand for that particular stock. And then his buddy would go and sell that particular stock uh, for a profit. So, I mean, pump and dump to an extent, yes, but a little bit, a little bit more contrived, a little bit more precise. Right. Uh, and, but all I'm saying is that, but that was here in the U.S. on Wall Street proclaiming like what he was doing and he had legit investors and le- and actual employees. Yeah. And all, I mean, so he did go to jail and he did rat a lot of people out and, uh, and you know, we've all seen what had happened through that. But what I'm getting at is over time, the challenges is going to be actually disciplining these people who went through this um, and, and 
procured that money and scammed those people, I mean, are we actually going to see them go down for that? Is going to be, I mean, you know, may, maybe and, and at that, best. And that's a, and that's another that's another thing. This is a space where you're behind a computer screen. Yeah, people can do a good job hiding IP addresses. You know. So this again, the CTFC or excuse me, the SEC said they're going to be coming after the fraudsters, the people who were domiciled in the United States, who promised returns and give us your money, and you know, they said the fraudulent behavior will be happening no more. Mm-hmm. Okay, because we will come after you. Okay, great. People still are doing ICOs. Yeah. So I think what they have been doing, what the SEC and CTFC have been doing, is working together to. Really build a case, right? So let's look at how these ICOs have been being conducted. Let's look at uh, the instruments used to raise the money. Let's look at the exchanges where the uh, specular, where's the speculation happening right. and whatnot. So huge news last week, which I think I said back in November or December, yep. is that exchanges will be the next big thing to go. When you put out an investor bulletin that says "watch out for ICOs," that's simply to protect investors. Mm-hmm. When there's actual investigations and uh, subpoenas being served to all the exchanges, okay, now there's an investigation. They sent out subpoenas to T0 Exchange. To they, I, I said the next thing that the SEC will be going after is exchanges because that's where half the, the I'd say 75% of the fraudulent behavior is happening. Mm-hmm. The pump and dumps, the manipulation, um, the money laundering. I mean, let's let's... We I, we can go down the whole uh, AML anti uh that like there's people who are financing terrorism. I'm saying that loosely because I don't know. Um, I I mean if the SEC can find that great, but you can clean money very easily in sure. the cryptocurrency world. Sure. Um. So that's that's still there. You know if if you're if the ICO didn't do an AML, which means if you if they didn't uh. Uh, re- uh, cr- collect all your credentials to make sure you weren't on any type of terrorist list or whatever. You could be a terrorist in Saudi Arabia, or you could be a terrorist in the United States and using Tor browser and still trying to clean money. I mean, that action is is still there. Yeah. There's still always going to be fraudulent behavior in whatever. There's still fraudulent behavior sure. in our traditional financial markets. Yeah, totally. Now, so what can we do to to clean all this up? I think the SEC is like on top of it right now. I think they're doing a great job, like I said, going after the exchanges who are who are um, listing illegal securities. Then we come back to what is security. Here's the most upsetting thing about all of this that I think I've mentioned once or twice, but all the instruments to conduct a legal ICO are out there. Yeah. And we've talked about that, yeah. how to conduct a legal ICO. So legal ICOs. Yes. <laughs> it's... it's uh, it's bizarre that these channels are already in place um, through regulators and people don't u- utilize them. For example, the equity crowdfunding that I was talking about. The Jobs Act was passed a, a couple years ago, and you could legally raise fiat cash, USD, USD, to fund your company. Yeah, or whatever. Or whatever. Pro- product or whatever it is. Yeah, it could be a movie. Yeah. And you could raise capital through the sale of securities. You yep. just have to go through a Reg D or a Reg A, uh, A plus um, filing, which is all part of the Jobs yep. Act. Go through the credit investors. You know, if you have a, a a decent law firm in your town and you have 10, 20 grand, go retain them. And you can go raise, if you, if you can go out and find the money, you can go out and raise up to... $10 million for your company through the sale of your securities in your company. That's yeah. that's legally, that can be, it's a legal way of raising capital in America and people don't even know that. And what are some you of those don't companies e- you don't mentioned? even need a, You don't even need a blockchain-based technology to do this. You no. can sell you can paper right securities sure. to investors, take their money, and go build the company. What are the companies that you're mentioning that can do that? Like a platform where like it can we happen. We funder, right? A platforms that allow for that to happen are like, um, well... Uh, Kickstarter was like a donation based, yeah. and I don't know if they ever moved into the actual sales securities. But uh, WeFunder was was a great example of uh, an equity crowdfunding platform. Indiegogo, Go for Funding, EquityNet, and there's a few of them. But and then another one, a few of them only allow for accredited investors. Yeah, yeah. accredited investor, which is, which is which is a Reg D. 
Uh, household income needs to be over 300k a year. Uh, individual needs to be like over 200 a year, or uh, your net asset value should be over a million dollars, excluding your home. Um, so, if you're an accredited, you can you can a Reg D can be filed for 300 bucks. If you just want to like go online and do it yourself, you can do that, and then you can conduct an ICO. Yeah. But you have to do a KYC, which is know your customer. You have to do an accreditation check, and you have to do an AML anti money laundering. I just told I just told people right now on this podcast what's probably a thousand dollars an hour worth of consulting time. Yeah. There's people out there who want to conduct a legal ICO. What I just said is probably worth a thousand dollars of my time. Yeah. Um and if you didn't go th- I mean you can rewind and go through it. If you really got into the weeds, go ahead, reach out to Jeremy and I will come out and consult your your legal ICO. That's right. That's right. Um but you know the instruments are there, no one's doing it. There hasn't, but there hasn't been a free, uh, excuse me, a legal ICO that's been done, uh, as far as I know. Um, there's been a few that have done it for accredited in- individuals, mm-hmm. um, but there hasn't been one that's done an actual regulation A plus type filing, as far as I know. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, you know, if people think that they need to go file offshore and be a foundation, and no, you don't need to do any of that. Yeah. you need. You probably can get. You can probably get it done for ten grand. Okay, so then the biggest question would be of all the the founders and the and the creators and the programmers and the people who did all this, yeah. where what what are their protocols? What are their steps? Because I mean you're you're more or less uh, You're talking about the, the programmers who've done ICOs? Yeah, or the yeah, exactly. I mean the creators and I mean the people you mentioned that no one has done it correctly. Yeah, the true the So we're talking thousands the, of illegal entities yeah. out there. What happens now? Right. So um I don't think the SEC and all these enforcement agencies can lock up everyone and throw away the key and say, hey, you guys, you know, you're wrong. I believe that the majority of the people will probably get a slap on the wrist, either play, pay a fine, file for some type of exemption saying that you're going to fix what you did wrong and move forward, go forward. Um, but I think that there are some really bad actors out there, and I think there are some uh, real fraudsters out there who um, – Stole a lot of money mm-hmm. and who conducted business in a very uh, ill fashioned way. Um, you know, people just people get greedy, and there was a lot of greedy actors out there during I think 2017 was the year we will hear about 2017 as one of the, well, if you're involved in this space, you'll hear of that as being one of the most messed up years because of what people did to this awesome technology. Now, after this, I really do think it's like the dot-com bubble and we're going to grow out of this. It's going to be insane. But look at the number of blockchain solutions in the space right now. Right. Do you, I mean, do you ever use the blockchain technology? That's what I was just about to ask. So we, we me and you were in a, uh, I don't know the exact name of it. Let's just call it a hedge fund meeting. There was a bunch of hedge fund people there, right? And we were discussing the panels and the panelist discussions. And that, one of the I gentlemen. this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the panel. Uh, in the restaurant, there was the four people there. You oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, forget, I forget this meeting. I was there, yeah. You I mean, were definitely I there. Remember. You definitely were there. We had two scotches there at that point. So uh, there was a gentleman who came up and asked us that exact question uh, because we were right. informing him a little bit about what we do. And so he asked, what do you do with his fingers? Like, what do you do with the blockchain? Kind of like you were just asking right. me. Now, so my answer is at this particular point in time, nothing. Other than transact a currency, like I, I've done remittance with with Bitcoin. If I need if someone needs Bitcoin, I can send them a Bitcoin. Um, I've done that before, but that's very very little. That's basic. That's miniature, infinitesimally small. Yeah. So to answer your question, almost nothing. But the solutions that are going to be there in the future will be the healthcare and the medical transacting, yep. uh, real estate uh, purchases. Like you mentioned, a potential the stock market could be on the blockchain. A lot safer than just exposing it on the internet. Mm-hmm. Companies could be putting all their data and information on the blockchain, which is a lot lot more difficult to hack than the actual internet, the storage is keeping, voting, right? Uh, Voting can be solved, gerrymandering can be done away with. You have all the possibilities of someone voting right from their house in a secure network and every single person has a vote, every single person. Supply chain, we talked about that. Yeah, we talked about supply chain. We had- Clones, everything. Yeah, so I mean- Internet things. Those are are the potential possibilities. So let me ask you, what have you done on the blockchain? Yeah, uh, not much. (laughs) <laughs> There's not a lot of solutions out there. Steam is probably one of the most used from, we a, talked about that, from yeah. a popular standpoint. Um, yeah, we, we talked about that with, um, what was his name? Ash. Ash. 
Um, so there's 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 a few right, but <clears throat> people got so in, entrapped. I think again in the greedy aspect of making money and raising money, and now people have this money. Are they using it to go build a solution now? And is that solution going to be a real tangible thing that you use in this world? And let's say let's say it is a healthcare you know blockchain where you can store and transfer medical records and that group raised you know a couple million dollars is the sec going to come in and say hey you guys raised this money illegally this is bullshit uh we're going to shut you down and they already have this product that's been made and yeah. now it's this awesome thing probably not they'll just follow an exemption of some kind they'll probably mm-hmm. have to follow an exemption of some kind but for and you know it's funny i'm sure there's some people in our audience that uh, are crypto enthusiasts and one of the terms is lambo and moon lambo right yeah moon tesla right so i'm sure there's 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 going to be some people who raised quite a substantial amount of money and who bit, did buy a lamborghini and those are the people who are going to probably be prosecuted to a further degree than getting a slap on the wrist or you have to file for an exemption sure cuz you used actual investor money to go buy a Lamborghini? Like, yeah. what are you actually using the funds for? Right. Um, that's one of the things they're going to look at. The other thing that is, is huge is the announcement that came out last week, which is the exchanges. Yep. And again, it, it came back to what are the vehicles and instruments being used to conduct fraudulent behavior? A lot of this fraudulent behavior is done by the whales, is done by the people who are into crypto early, who have a net worth of over $10, $50 million in crypto assets, and who can uh, manipulate a market. You know, um, the true pioneers of the space, if you look at those guys who who really were the early adopters and developers of Bitcoin, Ethereum, guess what? I mean, have you heard of any of those guys? Like, what did Charlie Lee do? I mean, sold everything and packed up Durant. He got out. Yeah. Um, Vitalik Buterin. Also he, mentioned, yeah. He criticized the entire space for yeah. what was going on. Um, you look at half the core developers of Bitcoin uh, Core, the, the core developers, th- those guys are owners of quiet little blockchain consulting companies. And they're working with multi-billion dollar companies mm. across the globe about how to install the blockchain, how to build the blockchain, how to monitor the blockchain. So the guys who really pioneered the space aren't operating in the bullshit sector over here about with all this fraudulent behavior. They built it, they made some money, they didn't get greedy and stay over here. Now they're on layer number two. And I think layer number two is really getting the uh, uh, the engine going for blockchain technology. But in order for all these people over here who are stuck in their fraudulent behavior to get to tier two, there needs to be some type of litigation, there needs to be some type of rules and regulation so that these people can really utilize the blockchain the way it's supposed the way the way I believe it's supposed to be utilized and the reason why it was built i don't think it was built um to buy lamborghinis and go to the moon you know or, or drive a lamborghini on the moon that or <laughs> it might, i just don't believe in easy it money. might have been used to go to the moon yeah possibly like maybe some type of i mean spacex and that's what spacex is right but i just it's very disheartening to see what this space has gone into being yeah. an early adopter of bitcoin um seeing the solutions it has provided uh, or what it could have provided more quicker than it hasn't. Uh, it's just got, it, people just got greedy and pe- there was bad actors and I'm all for regulation. I'm all for SEC and CTFC coming in and setting some ground rules and here here's what you guys got to do. File for an exemption, get ready or move forward appropriately or get the hell out or rent take you to court. Mm. I think all that's, I think that's perfect. Sure. It's gonna and it's gonna make the industry more credible. If you looked at the internet, we talked about the lack of blockchain solutions. Yeah. The internet was there and yep. it wasn't really utilized, right? Right. And For a long time it was just it random was just websites kind of and like, chat rooms. Yeah, it was just like cultivating as to what can really be built in this thing or on this thing. And I think we're a couple of ways away from that in the blockchain world. But we're moving out of that hype cycle, I think. Yeah, gonna, we got out of that. We're yeah. going to move into a nice steady growth. What's referred to as accumulation. Accumulation okay. phase. So yep. this is where hedge funds uh, start going in. They get in credit investors. They start buying some of this. And they tell their investors, okay, guys, long haul, long term. You can do some quick in and outs. But, we, I mean, this, these products, these organizations, these companies, when you accumulate. And we've, we've talked about this for months now. 
the tech bubble. We said it was going to it was going to run up, yep. it's going to run back down, and then it's going to trade sideways and do nothing. And people are going to get bored of it. Yep. People are going to think, oh, this is dumb. They're going to sell all their positions. Oh, I'm so glad crypto is over with. That was crazy. I could even see it going down a little bit more sure. with more SEC uh, but, yeah, rules and regulations possible. and investigate. If they put out a few more investigations this year. I could see it going. I could see the whole market cap going down, then trading sideways and starting that slow accumulation back. But after there's more, uh, there's a better legal framework as to how blockchain works and what it can be utilized for. I think is when huge money starts coming in, and that's where the the, the giants come out of. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Um, and we need to figure out what those giants are going to be. Yes, we do. Um, a big time. Yeah. <laughs> and if you have suggestions, you know. If you know of any blockchain solutions that are out there or any developers that are really on the cutting edge, um, you know, we've talked about Dan Larimer at uh, EOS, yep. uh, which I think is going to be huge. I'm a big believer in EOS. Steemit is there, I think, there to stay. I think Steemit can actually develop into uh, a, a bigger following the more, I mean, they're, act, they're actually providing a solution. Yeah, they are providing um, a solution. I think Bitcoin, again, is a store of value. Um, been saying that since day one. Ethereum is going to be interesting. Um, Here, here's the biggest question for me. So if we're chatting about uh, the next adoption phase, the giants that grow out of this, the, the phoenix that rises from the ashes, so to speak, let's, let's think uh, tech bubble stocks, right? Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, and to see what they've done. Mm-hmm. Um, do you see any harm in having and treating and viewing these instruments as a way to make a lot of money in addition to a value that they add or are you more about just the value they add or are you okay with people also making a lot of money in it because that's that's the I well, mean, yeah and no one's going to invest in apple they don't care what product they provide sure, they sure. don't make money in it no and and i'm all for that listen it's your money you can do it the way you want and sure. if you can make a lot of money go make a lot of money again i'm i'm not opposed to that. this is a capitalistic society I, i'm not opposed to you going out and trading stocks or cryptocurrencies just perform your due diligence. Make sure that you're you're operating on an exchange as isn't going to get shut down by the SEC, uh, and your all your assets are frozen now. <laughs> don't you know? Don't do that. And sure. <laughs> don't don't take investor money unless you know how to make money doing it. And make sure that if you're taking investor money through an ICO or through a legal offering to get into the space, make sure it's done appropriately. Right now, through the channels that we have available. Which you still may have to file for an exemption. Yeah. But right now, given the channels, do a Reg D, do a Reg A. Uh, Contact us do the, if you have yeah, any questions about the, performing do, legal Do the ICO. KYC, AML. Yeah. Uh, know your customer, anti-money laundering, uh, accreditation checks. Um, you know, and I think one thing that we might do uh, a little joint conference with, big announcement today. Sure. For the group. Sure. I think this fall, summertime, sometime before or after Thanksgiving, we're going to host a big educational conference here in Nashville, uh, actually in Franklin, Tennessee, right south of Nashville. Um, working with some people right now to get some really, and you guys know us, we like to keep it really uh, 3,000 foot view, right? Uh, 30,000 foot view. It's going to be, it's not going to be a really in depth, uh, in the weeds type conference. There's a lot of those there already. It's a really beginner base, how to get a wallet how to get involved in crypto, looking at regulatory aspects, looking at uh, you know trading techniques and things of that nature. Um, if, you, if you are an entrepreneur and you want to conduct a legal ICO, those are the type of conversations we have. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, we're setting that up now. Um, but what, else was, what were we just saying before I went off on that tangent line? I mean, I think I'm mean, really. I think that was it. We're just kind of, we're just discussing capitalism 101. Is is it okay for people to just want to make money in this field in this market? Which I would agree. Yeah. I mean, because like I said, in order for those companies to to grow and to really add value, the Amazons, the Microsofts, they do need capital. Right. Um, their value, their their commodity, their stock, it does need to increase. And again, if it's a pure currency, let's make sure everyone knows. People can make a lot of money trading currencies. Yes, you can. Yeah. And, and trillions a day. And it's going to be interesting to see what some of these coins, cryptocurrencies, really do fall into a cryptocurrency bucket. What falls into a commodity or securities bucket? It's going to be interesting to see how all these are categorized. Um, you know, if you're if you're really looking at long haul, and I know that you and I do this a lot, 
we want to look at the the groups or the networks that have the most potential that have the the biggest um i think developer backing behind it you know who's actually on the team we've always said that perform your diligence who's who built it to, to uh, the the blockchain is the blockchain a fork of ethereum is it an erc20 token is it a uh, fork of like what what is the blockchain you know let's look at what is the blockchain and what solutions it's providing uh, because some are just it's very easy to not know what goes on down here yeah. but if it has a pretty face you're going to want to get into sure. it um and uh so make sure it's providing a solution for you investing in these things long term for sure and i think uh the la- the one the one of the last points i was going to make was uh should i just add it i don't know well uh it's going to be an interesting couple months i think um yeah that that is a couple months. Two, two, I mean, really, with the run up like we had in 2017, 2018 is begging for, like I said, that accumulation, that slowdown, that non interested, uh, non interesting period. Which, with the technology, it might not last seven years, but it very well could last a year or two. Yeah, I th- easily. I, I, yeah, I think um, I, it's going to move quicker than the uh, dot com bubble for sure, just because of the technology uh, available to us, the access to information that we have alone. Right, but at the same time, I mean, the dot-com bubble was very slow for some companies, but again, like an Amazon or an Apple or uh, Microsoft took forever. Oracle took forever. So, 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 what is the what is the Apple of the blockchain? What is the Amazon of the blockchain? That's what we need. That's what we need to fill. And now I remember what I was going to say. Eventually, five years from now, there's going to be a lot of blockchain solutions out there. And I guarantee 75% of us won't even know that we're using some type of blockchain underneath. Sure, sure. Just like the internet. You know, what's the Wi-Fi? Okay, great. Boom. We're on it. Phones, computers, everywhere. We're using the internet, and yeah. it's just like secondary ha- habit to us. Sure. And think of the little kids who are five years old who are on their iPads at dinner when mom and dad are trying to eat. And yeah. they're like, oh, I don't have connection. They probably don't know what the hell that means. Yeah. Like, internet second nature. It doesn't even... It doesn't have to be a thought in some of these people's heads. Right. And I think that's uh, where blockchain will move to. We won't really know how the blockchain works. Yeah. Just like the internet. Sure. There will be blockchain providers. Sure. Call them BPs, just like internet providers. Uh, and I think that the solutions will be much more user-friendly on right. top. Right. And, uh, yeah, that it's going to be very, a very interesting ride. To answer your question about what is going to be the Apple and the Amazon of yeah. the blockchain, the blockchain industry, keep staying tuned to the fourth <laughs> industrial revolution, folks, because that's going to be the answer that we're going to be looking for each and every week. Yeah. Episodes coming out every Thursday with the corner views coming out every Tuesday and Saturday. It's your boy, Jeremy Alexander Newsom with Brian Masterson. And folks, we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. You rock. And until next time, love, live, learn. See you later. Bye. Love, live, learn.